What's up, Prince? Welcome back. For for those of you who were around last month, we were uh, hosting uh, Prince on on his uh, Twitch channel for our last meeting. Yes, uh, last time y'all saw me, I was doing some Rust stuff. Today, I'm not going to be talking about any Rust stuff. I don't have any Rust content for y'all yet, <laughs> but I hope y'all are looking out for it. Yeah, I was definitely like pumped to, to see all the Rust stuff. But all right, so hey, without any further ado, take it away. Cool. Let me just get everything squared away. I, I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes I have too many screens going on and I'm just like, where is everything? Uh, so that's just always me. In addition, uh, I'm just like Sarah at my screen and I'm like, I don't know what's going on now. <laughs> so let me select it. Did it work? Good. Perfect. <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, my name is Prince Wilson. I work as a software engineer over at a company called Newzella. And my whole focus at work is creating educational content. Uh, I don't produce that content. I just help enable other people to produce that content. And I, I think a lot about what that means for folks, uh, specifically in like, how do we make sure that we're always thinking in terms of, this is like what other people are going to have to do. And this is like the experiences that they can have. Uh, we're going to step through MDX uh, specifically. We're going to start with Markdown. Then we'll talk about what MDX is, what it enables us to do, look at some examples of that, and also just think about like, where can we go from here? So without further ado, we're going to go talking about some Markdown. Markdown, the MD of MDX. Uh, Markdown is a lightweight markup language that you can use to essentially format your text. Uh, many kind of... Um, apps nowadays really look at Markdown as like a, a good standard for both people who are really tech inclined and people who are maybe not tech inclined. But one of the things that I think is really important about Markdown is that its ultimate uh, goal, what goals were around it being easy to write, easy to read and valid for HTML. And for the most part, that's always true, right? The, the formatting that we use for Markdown is meant to be easy to read because at the end of the day, it's supposed to look like the rich text that we experience and easy to write because of the fact that we don't wanna teach people how to write HTML tags. We need to move past that. But I think the most important part is that valid for HTML that actually unlocks a lot for us because we can then basically say anything that we write in Markdown can be translated into the web, which so far is the truth. Uh, for people, you uh, might have never seen Markdown before, but here's kind of like a, a snippet of what Markdown looks like. We have the Markdown presented in a way that has like a heading, so that that Octothorpe hashtag, whatever you want to call it, uh, represents the heading level. When we have no for formatting characters, like here we have some text, uh, that's just actually a regular paragraph tag. And lastly, when we see the last two sections where they have those like asterisks and tildes, those are actually special ways to present that information. When we look at the web, the way that it gets presented is that it has a heading, we have some plain text, we have some bolding, and we have some strike throughs. I didn't even know that strike through was a, a thing beforehand, but I'm glad that it is because I write too many documents where I'm like, I wanna take that text out of here. And for the most part, we're like, all right, like this works. Like we've done the web, like we're pretty good. Like we can, we can do it, we call it a day. And like I mentioned before, uh, it's already found in a lot of apps. We find it in Discord, GitHub, Facebook, surprisingly Facebook, uh, and then also Discourse, which is a, a more forum thing. But the kind of thematic thing between all these apps is that they're around communication and being able to, for us to communicate ideas to other people. Just like everything else in the world, Developers always want more. We want to figure out how can we do more? What more can we do? Um, and honestly, I think the biggest drawback right now is the way that Markdown is. You can't do much beyond writing the rich text. Even though it can have valid HTML, it's not enough for us to be able to say like, oh, like this is building all the nice, wonderful apps that we have like with React. And a lot of people will say, you know, React, it, doesn't need to be everywhere. But I think one of the most important parts about that is that every user of the web now has a level of expectations around what we can do. And I think that is true not only in the ways that we like engage with applications, but also how we engage with content. So I think the most important part is how do we like do more in authoring that content? I think right now we haven't done a lot, 
But because we have the power of the web increasing, I think this is where MDX really fills the gap. I think MDX is the solution that allows us to be able to say that, you know, we're not just writing simple markdown pages, we're actually gonna be writing complex things that integrate with JavaScript. MDX is the solution. The idea around MDX is that it is an authorable format that allows us to take the work that we're already doing in Markdown and embed with JavaScript. We can import our components, uh, React components, other languages too, but mostly React right now in terms of this. Uh, we can do things like putting interactive charts, doing kind of embeddable things. And, it, and ideally it takes those long form paragraphs and makes them interactive. Here's like a small semblance of what uh, MDX can look like. We take the, exactly the same example before, but in the highlighted section, we have the button. And you'll notice in there that the button has this on click that allows us to say like, you're an amazing human. Uh, and when you ever click it, I guess it's not a secret anymore, but it well, it's a secret to me. So we go into our app, we're like, send a secret message. And look at that. We actually have a static page with interactivity. And I think that that's really powerful because when we as, people like see that we can do more in our content. I think that inspires us actually to think about like, what are the ways that we can scale this? So let's take a look at some other ideas that are out there. I came up with like a silly uh, interactive example to go through with this one, uh, kind of still in the same theme of doing button clicks because you have to start small. So here is an example of some React code. To kind of step through it, we are in, we're creating a, a component that we have here. It sets state where we have a total of that state, we can update that state. We can actually keep track of that state over time and the user can click on buttons. Every time they click on a button or specifically the first button, what they'll be able to do is be able to say, increase that total amount by one. There's a second button that's on there that allow us to reset the total back to zero. Right now, this is just a React component but in order for it to actually go into our MDX files, we would need to be able to say, import the command that we just made. It just happens to be relative to the same document that I'm in. Then just like the text that I want, I can present it and then look at that. I'm able to render it in line, just like the way that I've been writing all of my Markdown files. I think that the seamlessness of being able to write our mark. Uh, our MDX files like this allows us to not have to forego all the, span the special ways that we want to do this. So like, just to be clear, these are like the two lines that I've added to markdown files is the ability to import the component that I want. And then lastly, actually invoke that component to see that what would happen live. This is what it would look like. We have my wonderful example here where I, the, I, the user am clicking the button. And then all of a sudden, it's like in actually changing the face. I didn't talk about that part because I wanted it to be a surprise. Uh, but you'll see here, every time that I'm clicking that button, at a certain point, it will switch the smileys that I have. And then also later on, I can reset that again. So it allows us to create small infographics, things that we're kind of accustomed to nowadays. I kind of think back to the New York Times. A lot of people really enjoy being able to say like, oh, like, the New York Times is giving me information that one is just like shaped in a way that it's easy to consume, but also puts it in perspective. And I think this is the similar kind of truth that we can have here. Uh, another few examples that are out there in the wild, this one comes from Kyle Shevlin, where he talks about like directed graphs and where they exist. Um, this particular one is him explaining like the relationship described as admiration. And so you can see here as the as I'm clicking around, the the circles are actually moving around and they will never actually touch. That's the part of this specific uh, correlation. But this is all powered by MDX. This is you write your component, you put it into your blog post, you call it a day. And I think that once again, we see here is as a user, I'm more inclined to pay attention to what this infographic is and not just be able to parse it down as, oh, you know, this made sense to me when I read it, but I actually can engage with it. I can actually see what does it mean? I think to give some background, I previously was a teacher. And one of the, the things that I found really challenging is for students, they don't really learn unless they actually see what happens when they change something. And I think a lot of people are adverse to actually interacting with things and like, seeing what breaks. And I think this kind of facilitates that conversation of 
seeing what happens when I do that thing and knowing that I can do that thing. I'm gonna show another example here. Uh, this one is from John and Tander and they're talking about randomness and color. They actually showcase the colors changing. They're talking about ent entropy and like chaos that exists in the world. And I think this is probably what really inspired me. It's worth noting that John Tander is also one of the people, main people that works on MDX. In this blog post, they built these components that kind of highlight what they're talking about, but it doesn't even talk specifically about the, the technical aspect of what randomness really means. They kind of put it in perspective for anyone to be able to read it. And I think that once again, shows case that we can like move away from saying things as, oh, you must be like technical to get this. I don't wanna necessarily see code. I think an interactive example makes me more inclined to actually be able to say, this is what this means. Like uh, in the sentence says, when it comes to computation, entropy refers to general randomness of what's being computed. In some ways it's the noise or chaos factor. The hex color generator from earlier has a high entropy. We can see this in action when we compute a thousand random numbers at once. Saying it to you is one thing, but seeing what happens when you're computing this, I think really puts it in perspective of what is that concept going for? And this is what MDX affords us. It allows us to be able to say, cool, like this is an interactive example. And at, from the user's perspective, all they know is that it's interactive. They don't know what's powering it. Some people will be like, JavaScript's too much, but JavaScript gave us so much that it allows us to learn deeper. And one of the truths about learning theory is that you only learn by doing. Uh, that has the deepest connections into your memory. And I think this just goes back to saying like, we can create those experiences, even though we are developers, just because we have that technical knowledge doesn't mean that we can't be able to create experience that everyone comes a part of. So we're gonna talk about some more enhancements that I have. One of these things is called a color lap. Uh, inside of HTML, uh, there's a way to kind of highlight information. So that way people who are reading your document can actually know what's going on. So like in my blog posts, you'll see a lot of like notes that I have where I'm going in and saying like, hey, this is a thing. You should probably pay attention to this thing. In the top part, you'll notice that it, the purple is re representation of what it currently looks like. Whereas the bottom is kind of what I write in my MDX document. That is like all I write, I say that I'm gonna write a call out. I put whatever text I want to have in that call out and then it presents itself as this. In the call out like actual mechanics, what we'll see is that we're gonna like deep dive into some React here. And it's it's a small component, but I think this just goes back to showing like, even though we can write small components, this is how much it can enhance our experiences. We have our call out component. And I'm gonna make sure to use my mouse because I'm like waving my hands around. We have our call out component. We can set different variants. So variants just kind of describe what way do I want it to look like? And in addition to that, I can send in children, children and the elements that I wanna go inside of this component. I list out kind of rules around my variants, which ones should look where. You'll notice I have info up here, info over here in danger. This says, if I'm not receiving anything, make sure to send a defaulted info. Whereas if I send anything else, I can say danger. You'll notice here, I have my side component. This is the actual uh, HTML that's going to get rendered here. I have some CSS that I'm passing through in here and then saying which of the variants do I wanna have, which styles do I wanna pass in and then just render as I want to. This allows me to go, going back, allows me to write my MDX document like below and then make it appear like this. Once again, if we go back to like talking about Markdown, Markdown is meant to be easy to read, easy to write, valid HTML. If we th put this all together, like we are still getting all that semblance. I think this showcases that MDX is not a replacement of Markdown, but rather an enhancement of it. We're able to create more from it. We're not trying to be like, ah, JavaScript replaces everything, but more so we're trying to be able to do more with what we have. So we'll look at some other examples. Um, I'm gonna figure out how did it do this? Yes, cool. Perfect, so I think it's sharing that screen over there. I'm gonna pop some stuff over here, beautiful. So in here, I have my component and if we want to, we can actually get some more code over here. I'll show you 
this. So this is my page over here. This is all the stuff that I have. This is uh, G Gatsby, specifically some front matter. So nothing important up here. Once again, showcasing how to write something. Hello, this is from the future. If I go here, do some stuff, you'll see on the right here, I'm able to actually go and utilize my, my MDX to showcase that callout component. I am going to just type here, like, I don't know, uh, this is a person named Prince. And we can see that the component actually gets rendered. To showcase the variant part, we're just writing our, our prop here. And I can say danger, and that will actually change how it presents itself. So instead of being purple, it is now orange E. Uh, once again, even though you can have like the beautiful stuff that you want with React, you should always make sure to that, think about how are you writing your components in a way that allows you to be accessible, uh, making sure that you're thinking about, hey, is there enough high contrast? Because some people may not be able to read it. So even though you can build as much as you want to, make sure to think about that. I, I got asked about it, and so I'm passing that knowledge off to you. Perfect. So we have our call out. One other thing I want to showcase is inside of my MDX, I'm able to write code blocks. So let's say I want to write a code block uh, function hello, just return hello. And this is just going to be JavaScript. You'll notice here that I'm using these backticks in order to make code, like these are how we represent code blocks. And in addition, I pass in my, my language. This is also something that is powered by MDX. In addition, I can actually highlight specific parts of my text. So if I want to say like the first line and the third line, and I wanna highlight what's going on, I actually can tell my MDX component, hey, these are the two lines that I wanna highlight, specifically the first and the third. I don't know if it is worth going through all of that logic, but uh, I can give you the highlight, no pun intended. The highlight is that there is a tool that I use called React Prism Renderer that uh, essentially allows us to put more React components along the way. A part of the logic that makes uh, this code block work, it's gonna be a lot of code in here, but don't worry, I'll walk you through it all. Once again, talking about React Prism Renderer, this comes from that package. I'm able to pass in the code that I want. Once again, the children is whatever I'm passing along as the, the piece inside of here. I can specify the language as well. So for instance, when I mentioned JavaScript being the language, and I move this over here, no, that don't do that. Once I mentioned JavaScript, this is a symbolic representation for noting that this is JavaScript. If I wanted to change my language, I can do the same thing. So if I want to say like Ruby, and we write some Ruby code. If I don't write good Ruby code, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nowadays, I write JavaScript and, and Python. So I'm totally out of the loop with how it writes now. But you'll see here, once again, I have another code block. And if we go back over here, it didn't render the way that it needed to. But if I do RB, today is not your day. Okay, you're just not gonna render as Ruby, but that's fine. It's still a code block, which is the most important part. The kind of note for this is by default, there's only some specified languages that the React highlight does out of the box. So you just kind of add more along the way. In addition, you'll notice that I can provide themes. Out of the box, React Prism Renderer provides you with a bunch of code syntax themes that you can use in any way that you want. So, oh, I need to get you out of here. So if we just want to take a gander at that, React Prism Renderer. Everything froze. Oh, there we go. React Prism Renderer has a bunch of themes that you want. So if you want different themes, all you'll do is pass in the different theme that you want. So if we want this Dracula theme, I can go into my top part of my codes say Dracula, and then replace that undefined with Dracula, and it's a different theme. Woo, spooky, because it's Dracula. 
doesn't look much different because I've decided to keep the same, but let's do undefined. And you'll see this slightly changed now. So like this is how we can kind of enhance our blogging experience and enhance our product writing experience. I wanted to showcase some other examples that are out there in the wild as well, to be able to showcase like, oh, this is like how people can use this to enhance their blog posts. One person that comes strongly into mind is Josh Camus, Camo. Uh, they write a bunch of content across the web, specifically around React and how they build things into their own blog site. So you'll notice in here, and it might be very fine, but their text is actually sparkling. Uh, in here, they built a whole uh, component so that way they can make specific texts stand out. And I think that's really fascinating because it's like, these are the parts of the web that they get to own. And so they can do whatever they want, right? Like they can just be able to write whatever they want. And I think that's amazing because now there's no limitation to how we can author that content. We're not having to write like a whole separate JavaScript document to be able to describe this. That's what would happen if we weren't to use React, uh, if it weren't for us to be able to use MDX. MDX at the end of the day is just one flavor that we can use. In addition, they have another thing that they produce, which is called uh, Use Sound, which is a React hook that allows you to have engaging sounds across your thing. I don't know if it's going to play the sound. Oh, I wonder if it will. Can it share the sound? I'm going to share the sound real quick. I don't think it play the sound. It's OK. And I think about that, right? It's like those small details that we have here. That's how you can create content on the web for your own sites, for your own things. Specific, like it doesn't have to be, oh, some strict thing where you're only showing code blocks and it has to be formatted in this way. We can do fun things because that's the part about the web is that as we're increasing how much we can actually produce, I think that also means that people are expecting higher levels of engagement and higher levels of interactivity. And fun things like this make it more exciting to produce that content. MDX has a way to actually do other things. Like if you want uh, to do like React, uh, sorry, live re-renderings of stuff. So like, for instance, they have a, like a live code editor that I can type into. I'm gonna zoom in slightly there. So I'm typing in here, and then I'm going to use that special character that we talked about. Boom! It's a heading. What? If we want to like do some bolding, this is bolding text. It works. There's another component that they have talked about that is about live code editing. So if you want to take a gander at that, I'll make sure to send it through. But the last thing I want to talk about is how this can go into documentation. I've shown you all like the different ways that we like can update our stuff with regards to blog sites. And I think that's like exciting because it's gets, we get to own that. But I think one other area where we expect interactivity and learning and engagement is actually through our documentation. One doc documentation thing that exists out there right now that I think is doing a great job is use shopping cart. Uh, use shopping cart is a hook, a React hook that is intended to be built on top of Stripe Stripe's API. And in their documentation, they show a bunch of code examples. And I think one of the, my favorite things is that they do the documentation correctly. They're able to showcase how you can use your app and actually what it looks like when you use it. So here they have bananas, beautiful bananas, $4. We have an empty cart on the right. When I press the add to cart, we'll actually see on the right that it actually sends the same request that it would as if it were actually being sent to Stripe. In addition, if I keep pressing this, we'll notice that the values and the quantities and everything goes up. It's actually making these requests for us. In addition, when I go and click this clear cart, it will actually move everything apart. And I think this showcases how we can take things that we're building, create interactivity, not only for, you know, just for the fun of it, but in addition to actually showcasing and highlighting how can we do things. The exact code that they use to power this example, like they showcase to you and you can use through the library. And this is just one example of how things can get better. And that's really all I have for you today. Um, I want to just say thank you so much for having me here. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the webs at Maxell, but are there any questions? Any comments, concerns, hopes, dreams? 
should I stop sharing my screen? <laughs> Thank you so much, Prince. Looks like we got a lot of excitement in the chat over there. I have a, I have a question. Uh, yeah, er sure. Earlier in your in the presentation, you were showing, um, I think it was like your index.mdx mm -hmm. file, and you were showing your um, call out. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. so you were able to to use that component without even importing it. Is that is that implied through Gatsby or is that like a MDX thing? I am so thankful that you asked that question. <laughs> that is an important question. So not directly is it by built into Gatsby. Gatsby does have this in some of their starters, but one thing that it's worth noting is that there's specific work that you have to do in order to get kind of components out of the box. So there's a specific file that I have, let's pull it up, called the layouts file. Mm -hmm. And in here, I actually list all the custom components that I create that I want MDX to consume. You'll notice on the left, there are these object like keys that I have. These all map to certain keys that MDX already has, but the specific one that I do is called callout. So what this will do is essentially make a short code, something that maps. So when you use it inside of your MDX file, mm -hmm. it's just readily available. Not every component I'm going to write is going to be readily available. For instance, the first example, like the counter example, I won't have that for every MDX file that I want. I just want it for that particular one. Uh, so what I'll do is any components that I want anywhere across my MDX components or my files, I'll create this components variable and I'll actually pass that into my MDX provider. And it accepts a prop called components, which is all the changes that I want to have. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do we have any questions in chat? What's up chat? Will you, uh, I at Guru, where I work, we use MDX in our uh, storybook um, nice. documentation, which is really, really cool. Yeah, that's the, I didn't know till recently that storybook has like that kind of fit functionality. And so I've been very much like, oh, I want us to do that in our workplace. And now we've just recently merged in the changes to let us do that. One thing that came up was we wanted uh, non-developers to be able to use our storybook components. And this mm -hmm. has allowed us to actually write more like specific kind of granularity experiences that we want them to have. Love that. Yeah, that's that's like something that we've been doing too. Just like trying to lower that sort of gap between uh, dev and design. Exactly. That everyone wants to use our storybooks, like our <laughs> PM, our designer, our coders, like, and that's exactly it. We have to be able to think about how do we meet all these audiences. Mm -hmm. There is a question in chat. What are the extensions for writing MDX in VS Code? What are the extensions for writing MDX in VS Code? That's a great question that I don't think I'm, I know the answers to. I know that um, I know that in MDX, they actually have a few listed examples of things that you might want to add. For instance, in the editors, I believe that they actually have a few things like that will allow you to know like, oh, here's how I can do syntax highlighting. Or if you use any other uh, frameworks, this might be in important to you. Mm -hmm. So mdxjs.com slash editors. I wonder if there's anything else. I thought there was one more thing. That might be it. Very cool. Yeah, it looks like looks like we got some links in the chat to to various Thank various you, plugins. Chat. Sometimes VS Code will uh, let you know what what uh, plugin you need to if you're just working in a file. It'll be like, hey, you might want uh, this extension. For the longest time, I didn't install anything for Python formatting, <laughs> and every time I would open a Python file, it would just be like, hey, do you want to format your Python code? I'm like. <sighs> Please stop asking, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe today, maybe next time. I don't know. Just use nano, says Brian. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right, chat. Last chance for questions. Anything else? All right. Well, Prince, thank you so much for your time and for your talk. We appreciate that greatly. Thank you. Mm -hmm.